Welcome to Halo 5 Driving School. So this is going to be a very short and simple video to talk about how to drive a Warthog. In episode 2 we're going to be looking at advanced Warthog driving and how to use it in combat effectively and to really dominate with it. So for instance we're going to jump into our standard Warthog here. You can see that I'm currently in the driver's seat, there's a passenger seat and there's a gunner seat. Now we can simply get into a different seat by actually pressing A. So if you get into the wrong seat, you can switch quickly to the other seat and we can get going. You've also got different varieties. We've got the Scout Warthog here that has no gun. We've got the Rocket Hog here which has a rocket turret. And the Goss Hog which has a Goss Hog rail gun at the top. Which is very powerful. A lot of fun. So, let's talk about actually driving this vehicle. So in games like Grand Theft Auto and any racing game, you would normally have triggers that control your acceleration and brakes. And then you'd have your thumbstick which would you, you would use to steer the vehicle. So in a Warthog, it doesn't work like that. It's kind of reversed. You have your thumbstick on the left, so your left thumbstick actually controls acceleration and reverse. So for instance, if we push the left thumbstick forward, we go forward. We pull it back, we go back. And we can push it forward just a little bit to go slower, or we can push it forward a little bit more and a little more, so we can control our speed. But then how do you actually turn? Like, the right thumbstick actually moves the camera. But as you'll see, the wheels are also turning. So for instance, I wanna go, let's say up there, I would look at it, and then I would push forward on the left thumbstick, so I'm basically just looking to where I wanna go, and I'm accelerating and the warthog then goes that way. So say I want to go that way. I look at it and I accelerate. Let's say I want to go that way but I want to reverse. So I actually spin it around and go backwards opposite the way I'm looking. So this is very confusing when you start first start playing Halo and you're used to other racing games because it's the weirdest thing. It's like how the heck am I supposed to drive this? It's a very odd thing, but once you get the hang of it, once you practice, like for instance, you can do what I've done here, I've loaded up a forge world, and you can spawn in vehicles, you can spawn in objects, and you can have a good practice, and you can get used to using these vehicles. Now there's also different varieties in the actual warzone packs as well that you can get, which have different camels, but they also drive differently as well. They have a heavier feel, they feel a, bit, a little bit more controllable. These ones are very light. They, I tend to fall over and spin and go out of control whereas the other Warthog is a little bit more controllable and a little bit easier to drive. So it's great to come in and practice. So let's put this all together what we've learned. So we can go forward by pushing that and we can look to where we want to go. Now if we combine these and start to flow them together so I'm con constantly changing where I'm looking I can follow things like this line of this rock very closely and I can steer through little areas now not to say you won't crash into stuff but because of this control scheme it is actually incredibly nimble the vehicle is amazing at getting around and you can become very proficient in getting through very tight corners and very tight spaces and you can do this incredibly well like its control scheme just works so well for it, especially in combat. Now what you also have is the cable to use the brakes. And that is your left trigger. So if you say you want to spin 180, you can do this. Which is just simply looking around while still continuing to accelerate. But you can also hit the brakes and look around. And you'll spin around that a little bit faster. But you can also use that to go around corners quicker. Or to regain a little bit of control if your warhog gets a little bit squirrely. And you can hear the brakes when they go on. You kind of get a supercharge kind of noise out of the vehicle. This means I can nudge it around and make sure it goes where I want it to go. And I can control everything very well. Now you see there, the physics in this game aren't great sometimes. You'll sometimes spin out when you don't expect to spin out. And this is because each wheel is its own little engine. Which means if one of them's on the ground and the rest aren't, you can easily spin out of control because that wheel's the only one getting traction. And they're very powerful wheels. 
you can see here. You can control this vehicle so accurately with these controls that you can really get this puppy going where you want it to go. So my basic skills are that you don't want to reverse. You never want to reverse. Reversing is slow. You never want to do that. So if you ever want to get the hell out of somewhere, you want to hit the brakes and turn right around. And you want to never stop. So in the next episode, we're going to cover combat and how to use a Warhog in combat. So let's go over the basics right now before we move on to the episode so you get an idea. First of all, never stop moving. And keep to nice routes that you can go through without crashing into anything. The more, the more speed you can keep, the safer you're going to be. Because this vehicle is actually not very good at being protective. Your gunner can get killed extremely easy. The driver is tougher to kill, but you can certainly get killed. And it's very easy to get stuck on things. So for instance, we come against this tree here. It, it almost like likes to grab onto the tree. Like, really hard to get it off. You'll have to sometimes reverse. Now, if you've got to do that, you could be dead, or your gunner could be dead in that time. So you want to try and avoid obstacles at all. So I recommend you load up a forge map, you add some stuff in, you add some vehicles in, and you really practice, because you can make this Warhog into a killing machine. And especially in Warzone, because a Warhog can be called in immediately. You've got the wrecks for it right off the bat. Even the more powerful Warhogs can be called in immediately as well. And because they're so fast and nimble, they can last almost the entire game until people get start getting heavy weapons or tanks. And you can rack up a ton of kills, or at least your gunner can. So I recommend checking out the Warhogs, putting all this what you've learned into practice and coming back to Warzone as an awesome driver. So thanks very much for watching guys, I'll catch you next time.